Hello, this is George Lees again. Uh, I'm now going to dob on the time team for the ruthless role in life. That's Tony Blair, the genocidal Prime Minister and the socialist in inverted commas. And that man there is Tony Robinson, who is the head fundraiser for the socialists through all of his genocidal regime. <laughs> I don't know who the little munchkin is, but Blair was legendary for getting the people into Den Downing Street and lobbying them and getting them involved in major issues like the launch of the Leveson Inquiry and the whole thing is just a joke and a series of crimes against the ordinary people and the taxpayers. Okay, what I really want to expose is how they falsify British history and world history and they have a laugh at everything they do. I've now updated my OneNote files uh, to take this into account and what I'm going to expose is the whole of these jokes. We already understand a lot of them uh, and what we've got there is all the people lined up. This one declares that he'd love to go home and work for Pratt and Sons and I totally understand that joke in the time team and I totally understand the woman Carenza who uses our cleavage uh, and our breasts as an advert for the jocular nature of the program uh, and then she begins to dub on a medic <laughs> with a name called Elwood. Now Elwood is part of the Harvey joke about the pukas and the person who believes in the rabbits and you now know all about the role of the rabbits in wartime and the Winnie the Puka jokes, okay? It's about culling the people and having a belly laugh in secret societies and the elite universities around the world about the whole thing. He has not got the rat on the plate there, but we explained yesterday in the Gallipoli 1 video how ruthless these bastards are and how they interlock with the world leaders. And I'm going to show you today how they interlock with the clergy, with the military and with the BBC in a vicious cabal that steals from the world and brutalizes the peace-loving nations okay we've mentioned the judiciary again and again and again and this is the one who plays Jeeves in the Woodhouse laughs okay he's gone to America and he's part of the Freemasonic set up there now okay uh, and this is the the term baldrick I'm going to explain to you first because that's the role that Robinson plays in these series of vicious programs that cover different eras in British history I'm not sure what that one is but you've got you know laughs at the red coats you've got laughs at the commanders in chief you've got laughs at the people who call themselves darling which are actually parodies about Butcher Haig uh, and Darling always pretends that he's on rehab when someone comes at him making an accusation that he's laughing at the war dead. I don't know whether or not he really is unhinged or needs psychiatric attention, uh, but the, the jokes they share here are absolutely vicious, and I would not be at all surprised if God gives them a conscience in that way. Yeah, so can you see on the right shoulder they have a strap? Yeah, I don't know whether or not initially it was dem demonstrated as being a weapon carrying icon. It's on the right shoulder and it reinforces the right shoulder. Uh, and let me now show you what a baldric is. <laughs> it's as simple as that. The plain as the strap on your shoulder. Okay, the Freemasonic numbers are all over the place, but don't worry about that. This is quite an ancient thing. Okay. And that is a ro relatively innocent <laughs> revelation. It's just an explanation for why. And there's no cruel jokes involved in that, to my knowledge. <laughs> Other than that one there is revolutionary red and socialist. Look at what surrounds it. Yeah, it's in the yellow for cowardice and Rothschild thrall. And everything that happens with the world's militias are under their orders. Let's just scan down in case there's something important. 
there's a cavalry man wearing a mail shirt with a baldric over his right shoulder you now know the mail shirt is the mithril shirt and that goes all the way into the Lord of the Rings film okay and they can carry the sword on that strap and away we go so there's an explanation I'm just going to keep going down I said to you in the earlier video which laughed at this joke yeah the Liverpool Andrews liver salts when our troops are dying in the trenches they die of dysentery and they lose all of their body weight as they live that really slow death in squalor and so what you've got with this joke is the launch of a laxative in the homeland for the elites and everybody has it on their bathroom uh, in their bathroom cupboard okay it's a laxative they die of dysentery in their millions in World War One, and the, yesterday's focus was on Gallipoli and the deployment of the Liverpool jokes eh, and the salting the water issues which they laugh at as well the water for Gallipoli was imported from Egypt just to have a laugh okay then we get to the revelations that the same stories are retold from the Crimean War so here we've got Brigadiers Campbell and Ayer, Hall Halliwell, Colonel Doyle, <laughs> Adjutant General Major Hope, all massive financial uh, leaders, Prince Napoleon from France, <laughs> yeah, that's the Napoleonic dynasty several generations after Bonaparte had uh, been consumed into the stories that Greg Hallett told us about and that the body doubles were buried under the war office in Paris okay <laughs> General Can Robert General and Staff and Occasions and the S Sir George Brown they're offshore with Sir Richard England <laughs> so the Campbells are coming all of the stories all of the mythology uh, and that's the Gallipoli story but that one is actually the Crimean War and what the the Duke of Cambridge is aboard a vessel called the uh, the Caradoc and that's offshore and if you look the Caradoc up on Google Images now you get an image of a magnificent World War One battleship it's not as far back as the Crimea so they just keep retelling the stories and like the Brighton stories with the he white helmets they have piers a joke at St Peter and the piers that they have in Brighton and the white helmets are universally applied wherever the money is being laundered out so there's His Royal Highness the Duke of Cambridge arrived here in the Caradoc at 3pm on Tuesday the 9th and we've mentioned in the earlier videos how they use the working man's troop carriers as a joke about not needing the collier anymore and using the oil wealth which they're going to sequester from the Russian steppes in this conflict okay let's just keep going down the series of tabs here and I think I've sussed the jokes about when the tall guy comes out of the trenches in the final episode he says he would love to go back home and work with Pratt and Sons <laughs> so Pratt and Sons which is the tall guy here we go I forget what his name is is it Melchit? Uh, that's him with a tash ever so English he wants to go back home play cricket and work for Pratt and Sons so the next tab reveals that joke we've seen the Baldrick this is the Pratt and Sons one okay it comes out of Jesus College Cambridge Conferences Limited yeah that's Jesus College Cambridge where the woman Carenza works <laughs> she's a historian she's a senior lecturer maybe even a reader now but she's a senior lecturer and she's the poor woman in inverted commas who had to have her breast had her breast removed as an accident involving Dr. Elwood. <laughs> yeah. 
right then there's the first register on this uh, which is Jesus College Cambridge Conferences Limited Mr Christopher Lucan you've heard that name before I think t driving the taxi in Turkey <laughs> McCritchy Pratt okay uh, and all of these take us into massive links with the Browns again but that's relatively innocent and when we find the medical doctor who's been defamed he's actually an interlocking director on the same boards okay look at this London Law Services Limited 53,000 companies crashed out of the 53,000 or so that they run yeah <laughs> 1,697 are still current it is absolutely ruthless so the Pratt and Sons joke is a financial services joke and that's London Law Services <laughs> okay we could keep going into all of these but I won't have the time because I've only got 50 minutes on me little uh, camera uh, and so that's the gist of the Pratt and Sons joke as we move down we'll get to see that there's more along those lines and the involvement of the militias the navy and the clergy in all of the jokes and the profiteering is really really sinister <laughs> yeah I do not look forward to a call from those heavily armed helicopters anymore now that I understand how ruthless they are and when we lived in the Chip and Norton region the place was full of militias the Air Force people used to pretend that they fell out with the army people about emptying their dustbins near where Prime Minister Cam Cameron empties his dustbins and near where my brother-in-law empties his but when we were living in his cottage for a while before we went to New Zealand we emptied the dustbins and I had very graphic conversations with the militia men right up the food chain uh, they were not in uniform but they were very well spoken like the time team <laughs> okay and there's a picture of the time team on one of those images up there on the stills uh, it may take a little bit of time to reload oh merd so they've got three or four people in the time team some of them look a bit scruffy and at times they wear the ponytail like the Australasian person who's the expert in the analysis of all of their finds <laughs> yeah and all of the things that happen around here like the disinterment of the Roman camp up near Melrose means that all the treasures just get buried underground again <laughs> they don't bother sucking them out and putting them in a museum yeah it's an obligation for them believe that if you like okay that I think is Carenza but we'll see pictures of her further down so this is Robinson I forget what the others are called but Carenza is legendary for leaving the cleavage exposed but I've had a wee look on YouTube now and since she's made the accusation about the doctor yeah messing up her cleavage by accidentally creating a mastectomy like the shipman scandals yeah but this occurred even before we left for New Zealand yeah it's a false flag to take the attention off but she may well have had a mastectomy yeah because of the things that I'm telling you about what people do in the media and they're so deviant that they tell lies to keep the people enthralled and to totally ignore their financial crimes so but to use the excuse that a doctor has made a mistake and to keep all of the patients in that region in fear that the NHS is on the verge of collapse and it's run by buffoons is a really sinister thing to do that drives everybody into the continuing professional development issues that we've talked about with my brother-in-law in Chipping Norton and the asset stripping of the whole of the dental profession and all of British students in every healthcare profession now all of them are cast into a massive debt burden which these little socialists 
think it's really funny so he's the fundraiser for Tony Blair for almost a decade in all of those genocidal issues that occurred in uh, Iraq and then in Afghanistan with Tony Blair in the thrall of George W. Bush and totally ignoring what his government was asking him to do. Now the envoy to the Middle East and this guy is now, as we saw in that first picture, a knight. This one has the ponytail and I've explained that the ponytails are just a joke about the horses and the world's owner through all of historical time. Yeah, that's the Piso family and then it becomes the Rothschilds as they make the transition into the money lending which is an obligation for all politicians to engage in. They dare not refuse to go to war and they dare not tell the truth in their historical investigations otherwise they're in a shallow grave. Yeah, and the graves and the issues that we got about this spoiling of by the latrines of all of the ground around the trenches makes the romantic nature of the stories that they tell an absolute abomination. They cull the innocent citizens and it is totally ruthless. Okay, let's see what else we get further beyond that. So there's another picture of Robinson. He's looking quite decrepit now. That's the image we've seen on the year that he got his knighthood. Okay, and there they are back in the ancient times and several members of the cast, including the character Flash and Queenie, have died either on the ski slopes or in cardiovascular accidents relatively recently. Okay, they're ever so nervous now that the gods are onto them. So let's see a little bit more about the financial services jokes and the involvement of our military. <laughs> yeah, so the boss for Carenza at Jesus College Cambridge is a guy who's a lord <laughs> Lord Renfrew and guess what he's sponsored by people of the magnitude of Walt Disney <laughs> Andrew Cullen Renfrew the Masters Lodge Jesus College so you've got Freemasonry and you've got one of the most corrupted institutions on the globe that leads to all of the warmongering and all of the citations I gave you for Fleming's Intel organizations and the launch of the Apostles as Intel into Russia and all over the free world so that all of its things that belong to the countries that we take over suddenly become British chattels okay and assets and that includes the Hermitage Museum in Russia. It's massive. Everything they do is huge. There's another mention of the name Lucan. He's a defector, a murderous defector. <laughs> He's still breathing and they all know it and they think it's really funny. You've got Graham Goddard, one of the goodies. <laughs> yeah, was it? I think it was, there was a triumvirate of them in the comedy sector and uh, it is just amazing what they get away with yeah you've got bakers Blandford bakers uh, and there's nothing really of note there but let's go down just in case Renfrew's profiles I'm oh, sorry we've skipped a page so he's a kind of plump guy <laughs> typical of the three Masonic professoriat and thank you for the folk from the Speculative Society in Edinburgh for coming forward on the streets of my hometown and identifying that some of you care about the future of your country. I will not name that person, <laughs> or maybe I should for my safety. I met the Usher dynasty that run the Usher Hall and their whiskey distillers and I'd like to have him as a friend because <laughs> I no longer get anything from my family in inverted commas because they realize I'm on uh, all of the minor corruption that they engage in right then so this is the division of archaeology at Cambridge and it's quite uh, bewildering that you can study the archaeology in Jesus's college <laughs> okay no surprises anymore almost all of the religious jokes 
come out of Oxbridge yeah and you've seen the massive institutions that are involved so this is Professor Colin Renfrew Lord Renfrew of Camesthorne so he's easy to find on the business register and I found him and Carenza's doctor is an interlocking director with him <laughs> isn't that a shock for you all <laughs> right then let's see his mug shot and he's got quite a large <laughs> area of jurisdiction okay <laughs> zoo archaeology archaeogenetics <laughs> yeah that's finding out who's eating the horse meat and finding out too late to stop Lance Armstrong in his track that he is actually a drugs user for the whole of his period in greatness and Princess Anne is prepared to eat the horses as soon as she is revealed as someone who's involved in the grand larceny and in the killing of the people in the Twin Towers in America. <laughs> and our daughter marries Mike Tyndall to cover up the Tyndall Air Base and its deployment on the Florida coast in the bringing down of those towers. Yeah, they were actually brought down by detonation, but I don't want to go there. I want to tell you all about the war crimes joke because that is what is going to end it yet they cannot laugh in the winds of change that are consuming them now that we know that Mr Bean was the war correspondent for Gallipoli and that Blackadder took the piss out of that and all of the religious jokes in the Chariots of Fire film on the opening ceremony of the London Olympics 100 years after the genocidal people met in the eugenics conference at the Hotel Cecil in London that was 2012 minus 100 years is 1912 okay my mathematics are not strong okay Dorothy Garrard laboratory for isotopic analysis it gets right down to molecular chemistry <laughs> yeah and the jokes that they share are just rustic eh, and they are particularly vicious in the light of all of the war dead that can never be recovered Professor Colin Renfrew Lord Renfrew of Kames Thorn that's a joke about the crown of thorns <laughs> I should know what a came is uh, I think it's cheap fodder for sheep okay and I think there are some pictures no. I was set up oh, there he is I don't know how I missed that there he is is not a spring chicken <laughs> senior fellow now this is really funny senior fellow of the McDonald's Institute for Archaeological Research guess who sponsored it before him formerly the Disney professor of archaeology and director of the McDonald Institute that's McDonald's the burger stall where they fought in Iraq and they were pre present as traders on the NATO Tony Blair side and in the Saddam Hussein cities that were brutalized and flattened by people with vested interests in the business the dirty tricks business and profiteering from everything that our military and our religious figureheads do okay it is really really serious uh, but they think it is really really hilarious yeah and all of the fairy stories that we are told I've told you already little Jack Horner everything that we get in the kids sector is a joke yeah you know but the frogmore concept and kissing the frog is gonna give us a decent monarchy after all of these years <laughs> it is just a joke okay so interlocks <laughs> uh, for this guy we've already seen that page 
uh, and that is where he's declared on one of his listings as being a director at Jesus College where he works and where Carenza works with him as one of the office juniors uh, and we could open that up it's less interesting than what we get further down now I don't know I would imagine that this is Carenza's husband okay I got it from the interlocks with the uh, Pratt and Co uh, and there we have the bizarre linkage of this Colonel Colonel Carenza who's called and it so what you get is two companies for this man soldiers and airmen airmen's scripture readers association in brackets the soldiers and airmen scripture readers and the next one is even more sinister naval military and air force bible society registered here this is colonel carenza since 2011 right up to the present day and he's still on this other religious entity that's what scripture is it's the writings for the religious texts <laughs> isn't that amusing yeah <laughs> uh, and you know if they are really believe in God it's quite surprising that <laughs> Carenza gets a cancer <laughs> that's not surprising at all to me I've revealed how they all get it because they laugh at the millions of people that are impoverished by all of these scams and the involvement of the militias the navy and the air forces in the no-fly zones in places like Iraq and in Syria yeah yeah in all of the conflicts in the Lebanon in Libya all of them were imposed no-fly zones and their cities were flattened it is really pathetic uh, and the name of the other guy uh, Elwood is used in the film Harvey which is about the Pukas which is a joke about the Freemasons and the running of all of the world wars using the u elite universities the skulls the uh, city and guilds in London the temple bar and all of the secret societies that they use and this one <laughs> for Colonel Carenza's listings uh, that's not his real name his real name is going to be mentioned further down uh, oh and they've got stock market shareholding releases and that makes them money from nothing <laughs> okay so there we've got Soldiers and Airmen Scripture Readers Association V registered as a director from 1995 to the present day and registered in the other one since 2010 to the present day <laughs> ok and there we've got from an issuance of no shares at all they've now got 77,000 which is chicken feed but because they use uh, swift <laughs> the money could be anywhere across Europe or in the Caymans already yeah it is really really vicious <laughs> and that's why they make up the stories about the health care and they create panic in the peace loving community who are on the verge of seeing their doctor and getting a diagnosis for what may be an oncological event and all of the other doctors who are genuine lose everybody's trust and faith and then they have to start retraining for the rest of their life when they are then asked as they engage in the retraining to pay again a massive fee as they get taken over by the Royal Society <laughs> yeah and that gives them a massive fee every year to retain the right to work and the retraining keeps their heads away from all of these guys financial crimes and everything that happens eh, in the brutalized Middle East and in sub-Saharan Africa and in French colonial North Africa all over the world we are in charge 
of brutalising other people's country for their geopolitical assets. The sun's gone in a wee bit there. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, they get join a referral program. Oh, and one of these is registered in Portsmouth in Hampshire, which is where the epicentre for the religious monarchy siring. Gosport is right next door and the Isle of Wight where Queen uh, Victoria had her first baby uh, Marcus Manuel on the Isle of Wight that's the Peter Sellers issue and the Sellers man that tells the story about the genocides in Gallipoli is just a laugh and a diversion from all of that okay <laughs> uh, and what else have we got let's see if we can scan down it a little bit further The Reverend Canon, yeah, so these companies are riddled with vicars, reverends, <laughs> yeah, and it's really amazing how they get away with it. Swift Incorporations Limited. Let's go down and have a look at the Air Military Naval Military Air Force Bible Society Directors and Secretaries. I'll click on it and we'll s let's have a look at the highlights and then we'll come back and have a look in a little bit more detail. And then you've got the Soldiers and Airmen Scripture Readers Association. That is registered at Aldershot where the armies are trained before they're released into the highly risky situations that all of our young people in uniform are now forced into because they've asset stripped all of the decent jobs. They're now taking a fortune from all students who go the peaceful route and only the supremely intelligent people that are prepared to steal from their former colleagues get the jobs in financial services or the corrupted companies and the massive global education frauds that are Bill Clinton scams that got my totally innocent video on Bill Clinton's global foundation shut down without any views being allowed okay and that is a scam on global warming which are the acts of God that it occur in the face of human evil okay so th that's Havelock House Barrack Road Aldershot Hans G -I -G -U 11 I think it's 2NP okay <laughs> Soldiers and Airmen's Scripture Readers Association the let's have a look at the details of the Naval Military Air Force Bible Society directors and secretaries <laughs> are you beginning to get a little bit nervous about justification of conflict anywhere on the globe <laughs> you really should be because it is vicious and the fact that the chief socialists are running that as a for-profit organization is really really tragic Twyford Avenue, Portsmouth, Hampshire, PO2 8RN. Oh, they're not going to let me what, look at it today. <laughs> I did this at 1 o'clock in the morning this morning, uh, and now they're going to ask me to pay for it, give my email details by the looks of things. <laughs> yeah. But thank goodness I captured the stills. I think you can get the gist of it already. Directors and secretaries, we may struggle to find them. Oh no, Swift Incorporations Limited, 263,489 companies crashed of the 266,000 that they have run. Yeah, and that was back in 2004, before the banks were collapsed. Swift Incorporations Limited, Mr. John Martin Hines, innocent enough. Captain Richard Carson Pend Prendergast. Right then, ever so slowly. That's the previous secretaries. Warrant Officer Stephen Kenneth Martin. Venerable Ronald David Hesketh. Reverend Canon Kenneth Peters. Reverend Dr. Victor Dobbin. There's a Dave Dobbin sings about loyalty 
to New Zealand in the South Pacific, quite a pathetic looking character. I've often wondered why he's launched into the New World Order musicians, but I think I now understand it. Dave Dobbin feels like home. <laughs> Reverend Canon Denzel Hugh Erasmus Mosford. Yeah, that's the Erasmus that was involved in the plague issues. <laughs> Reverend, that word makes everyone really nervous. Reverend David Stephen Potterton, Mr. Ian David Lovell Shore, Colonel Robert George Russell Hall. Right then, into the current secretaries, Mr. Matthew Norman Thomas, Mr. William Grant Ashton, Mr. Reverend James Pitkin, Robert Alistair Gallagher, Mr. John Michael John Wilson, Colonel John William Lewis, that is the woman's husband. <laughs> he was born in 1957 and we can have a look for him if you want. <laughs> okay, that's Carenza Lewis's spouse, born in 1957, interlocks with the, the doctor who's called, what did I say before? Uh, let's have a look <laughs> okay you click on the name when you find it and we will find uh, it might be safer to go back to the list because I know that we can find the interlocks that way but let's have a little go it's going to be ever so slow as well he's only got two registered businesses uh, And this one's also in Wiltshire, John William Lewis. So this is the husband of Carenza, 904-355-345. Uh, and his short name is John Lewis, <laughs> for obfuscation reasons. And they are the retailers on the high street. And they are now closing down all of the retail outlets, getting rid of all of the legitimate staff, and replacing them like Amazon with people that work in the online sector and do not pay a cent in tax. That should be a penny in tax. Yeah, but all of the American firms are already doing things that way in the UK. Soldiers and Airmen Scriptures Readers Association, the Naval, Military and Air Force Bible Society. Okay, so which one are we looking at? Let's go back to the list and just work our way through the tabs in case I miss something important. Okay, so close that down. Go back to our list and look at the socialists at work. It looks as if they might be drinking <laughs> gin and tonic or something ever so posh. And it looks as if Tony Blair is a really sober profiteer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Colonel Carenza. Yeah, so the woman's name is Carenza, eh, and that's her first name. And now let's have a look at what we've got to say on her tab. Okay, so this is the sh husband, and as we've just seen that eh, registered in Wiltshire. Is there anything else to add? Oh, Carenza Lewis. She joined the team creating the first Time Team series shown in 1994 uh, by Dr. James Elwood in 1997 and had an unnecessary double mastectomy. So James Elwood we've yet to find, but I've got his tag further down. Okay, so they took both her breasts off and it was deemed to be a mistake. The role of her breasts in the series is to titillate the viewers and to take their attention off the false history that is being relayed to them okay <laughs> uh, and our hubby is on the board of these bizarre military religious companies and interlock with a Dr. Elwood see below small beer profit profiteering so let's have a look for the evidence that Dr. Elwood has been captured in these stills okay that's the registration for John Lewis that we've seen and here we've got Colin Renfrew 
the former Disney Professor of Archaeology and Director of the Macdonald Institute, uh, Dr. Elwood, is this the stuff with his... Ah. <laughs> and he's involved also in shareholdings and raising funds from issued capital of Zippo and his holdings at the Soldiers and Airmen Scripture Readers Association V. We must have missed him in passing because he's only got the one registration. But that is the interlock that I was looking for. 3,654 quid out of Zippo. <laughs> yeah, no shareholders identified for reputational reasons. Okay, is a retired British physician. He's responsible for 222 cancer misdiagnoses. Okay, James Stanley Elwood. It's confirmed with the middle name on the business register. I did not think they would be stupid enough to leave the evidence behind them, but they are. <laughs> And they probably think it's really funny because there's nothing that law enforcement globally will do about this. Yeah, but when they realize, the people that watch it, that what they're doing is laughing at their dead relatives who were conscripted in 1914, then again in 1939, and all of their grandchildren are being sent into wars now with a microphone pinned to their helmet so that if they do anything wrong or bad, as a private, they will be subjected to war crimes inquests. <laughs> and the leaders who argue even about who, who's entitled to the free dustbin collections, yeah, can get away with tucking it away through SWIFT and all of the other laundering tools that we talk about all of the time. And he would have worked at Princess Margaret Hospital in Swindon. Everything's got the royal affiliation if it's twisted like the Royal Hospital in Birmingham where Gordon Brown fixed Malala so she could be a spokesperson for him and the UN within a few weeks of her having the bullet removed from her brain. <laughs> Royal United Hospital Bath NHS Trust Frimley Park Hospital. Carenza Lewis, who later spoke publicly, among the patients who received faulty diagnosis was archaeologist Carenza Lewis, who later spoke publicly about the consequences of the resulting unnecessary surgery. Elwood was not subject to any disciplinary procedures, having removed his name from the British Medical Register. He did not remove it from the listings of these companies. And I think that he's only got the one company. So this is just a sad cover. If the lady really did get cancer, what they're trying to do is cover up the acts of God theory that if you're evil and prepared to deceive the whole country and profiteer from secret societies, then you're going to get cancer, yeah? Or you're going to get a cardiovascular accident like Bill Clinton did when he founded that foundation, okay? Let's see if we can get the actual evidence that he's registered. There he is, Dr. James Stanley Elwood, registered between 1991 and 1995 on <laughs> which of the companies is it? James Stanley Elwood And he interlocks with Middleton's, Jury's, Warwood's, Priestnall's, West Squadron Leader Robert John Wesley. I cannot actually find. And there's the Colonel John William Lewis, who's Carenza's husband. She's Carenza Lewis. And here we have Soldiers and Airmen's Scripture Readers Association there. So I have to do it by screen capture now because I cannot get the details and the graphs because they've stuffed up the company check site since I became a very insightful uh, researcher. Okay, All you get now are the collapsed lists where the facts are ever so difficult to see but these are the interlocks on the board at Soldiers and Airmen Scripture Readers The 
and you've got names like Barwick and Murdoch and Wearings and Fergusons and Frasers <laughs> and Kerrs and almost every one of them are in the dynasties that become the governor generals the leaders for our country and the twisted media and the Brevik issues are talked about all of the time by Greg Hallett and Brevik was loosed on New Zealand around the same time as he was loosed on Norway uh, and all of the cover-ups and all of the little movies that they make feature folk like Michael Grade and Ingenious Films LLP they can tell whatever story they want to yeah and the fact that it creates panic in the genuine NHS patient community and they get ever so distrusting of their innocent doctors and the doctors are cast into retraining every year of their life in the profession that's the scam and the financial crime is never detected unless you've got time like me because I'm so innocent that I cannot get a job in any of these sectors now <laughs> I met Ferguson in New Zealand when he was just in the process of packing up as the Governor General. He had a horrible accident and broke his ankle <laughs> like many people have done, Hillary Clinton, Indiana Jones, all of them think it's an accident but when you look at what they're doing at the time you realise that God has a hugely finely tuned sense of humour and a sense of timing that is impeccable. <laughs> Yeah, the April, the fish jokes, <laughs> and the biggest quakes in human history. Okay, Group Captain Anthony Salter, Macaulay's, James Stanley Elwood. Okay, <laughs> Colonel Edward Bradley Lawrence Armitstead. Yeah, all of the royals, that could be a royal, because all of the royals are the head of a military institution still. Prince Philip was the head of the Navy for 30 years and a successor to Winston Churchill who was forced into resignation because he botched the Gallipoli campaign in the 1930s but was back in power again sorry in the uh, in the First World War uh, and then was back in power in time to lead us into World War II with his reputation completely untouched even by the genocides in Gallipoli <laughs> and the people in the intelligence teams that do the historical analysis are also geologists that's the joke about the oil find on the Russian steppes which the whole of the conflict was designed to steal from the Russians okay <laughs> do you get the picture okay so something's in the Elwood thrall or Carenza's thrall is registered at Farnham Airport James Stanley Elwood 34 Burn El New Company check add to dashboard it's ever so difficult to find this out but let's open him up his director number is 900 967 973 Registered address 34A Burnt Hill Road, The Bourne, Farnham, Surrey, GU10 3LZ, The Bourne, yeah, <laughs> ever so posh. It's the name of rivers all across the Chalk Stream district in the south of England, and that is where the drug running triumvirate came from. Okay, a river, I've got the books on my bookshelf, uh, and I was totally stunned when I learned that the people that write those fishing novels are actually running the drugs into the South Pacific short name James Elwood year of birth 1921 so the hubby of Carenza was born in 1957 or the person who's a relative of her on that direct linkage to Pratt and Sons <laughs> yeah and it takes you into the same military and religious directorates Okay, Farnham, Surrey, I believe there's an airport there. He's not touched anything for fear of disclosure, but that's confirmation 
that he is on the directorate of the Soldiers and Airmen's Scripture Readers Association, the with all of those reverends and the right honourable people and the generals and the admirals. Okay, that could be the end of the story on that particular slant and I don't want to go much further on that. BBC Elwood. So this is the output on the scandalous news that patients everywhere are rendered unsafe by jokers like him. Yeah, it's the same. The shipment character was the war correspondent for Iraq when Tony Blair killed Robin Cook, okay, and David Kelly, and the Shipman killings in the NHS launched the whole of the retraining for pharmacists and for medics and everybody that works in that sector. The nurses also do it now. That was confirmed in the supermarket for me by a friend the other evening, okay. Freelance pathologist James Elwood, 78, made a number of serious mistakes in his work testing for cancer and other diseases while working at only fo at four hospitals. Yeah, and they release all of the news about those hospitals and all of their IDs and every patient that goes there is in the fear of their death. Dr Elwood works on four occasions at Mid-Sussex between 1994 and 1995 Royal United Bath Hospital that's Bath where the student loans company is running